Hey guys, this is George Vieira with e-commerce mentoring and today I'm bringing you a tutorial on how you can accurately track your paid traffic data by using UTM tags. Now, the first thing that I want to go over is how UTM tags are different from conventional tracking solutions such as the Facebook pixel. And I'll draft up a quick explanation of how UTM tags are different from conventional tracking tools such as the Facebook pixel. Let's say that your prospect is right here. This is your prospect. And please excuse my very poor drawing skills, but this is your prospect. He's holding his phone and this is your website right here. This is your store. They click your call to action, right? And they go to your store. They're gonna see your store. Now, the problem here with tools like the Facebook Pixel is that when they click the ad, they click the call to action and then they go to the website, there are privacy systems in place that will make it very hard for the ad to communicate with the website and tell you where they came from. The reason for this is that the Pixel works by communicating from Facebook API through to your Shopify store. So let's say this is your Shopify store. And when they click, there's gonna be an interaction here that of course is carried through the browser. Let's say that they've clicked the ad and then your Facebook API is trying to communicate with your Shopify store and it's doing so through the browser. So let's say your browser in this case is Safari, right? Because Safari is the obvious example that had all the issues with the iOS 14 update. Now Safari is going to ask the customer, so the prospect is coming from the ad, if they want to share their data and to be followed and tracked on certain websites. If they say yes, then Shopify through Safari is going to be able to communicate back to the Facebook API with your data. And then if you do purchase on the store, your own, the owner of the store, whoever is handling the analytics, will be able to identify where that purchase came from. Now, if the person that made the purchase is not allowing information to be communicated through Safari, then Safari is going to act like a barrier. And and Shopify and the Facebook API through the Pixel, what is communicating the information, because of course the Pixel code is installed in your Shopify store, they won't be able to communicate, right? Because Safari is going to block this communication and you get a sale, you don't know where the sale came from, it could have been anyone. And maybe it wasn't even paid traffic, maybe it was organic. And then if you're trying to scale your business and you don't know where the sales came from, of course, that is a big issue. It's in fact, one of the greatest issues that the advertising industry has experienced recently. So especially for those on a lower budget, this can be a very, very big issue. Now I'm gonna explain why UTM tags work differently and why UTM tags don't really face the same issue by being blocked with a browser like Safari or because you're prospect is running on an iOS device. In general, all iOS devices implemented this privacy, these privacy changes. Facebook as well, depending on regional legislation, was also forced to implement certain privacy rules. Anything that requires communication between your store and an external API through the browser is highly compromised, of course, because of this, because people get to choose if they want to share their data or not. Now let's talk about how UTMs work and why UTMs work in a different way. So a quick recap of Facebook Pixel, for example, we're gonna do it like this, Facebook Pixel, and then we're gonna draw a line and we're gonna do UTM. So Facebook Pixel is going to be communicating data in this way. So you have the ad, people click the ad, they go to your Shopify store, and then on your Shopify store, they take some sort of action that implies value, right? Sale and add to cart, there could be many different actions that have value. So the problem here, as we were saying, is that there's a wall here that in our previous example was Safari that does not let this communication occur, right? Because people have these privacy settings and they forbid this communication between your pixel code on your Shopify store and your Facebook API on this side. Of now course. we're going to compare this with what happens with the UTM tags and why the UTM tags work and are able to give you pretty much close to 100% accuracy tracking your conversion data, okay? So again, we have the ad and the ad is going to take people to your Shopify store, right? And then there are gonna be actions with value that people take on your Shopify store. 
The difference with UTMs and how UTMs work is that there's going to be a parameter, a small parameter that's going to be included in the link that will be in the call to action on your ad. So when people click the call to action on the actual ad to redirect them to the website, the link is not just a simple page link. It has some UTM tags inserted into that link, which means that the information of where the customer came from is actually going to be coded into the link itself. Thus, the browser is not gonna block it because it's not a third party communication channel that the, the browser can just stop. It is on the actual URL that people click, right? For example, if you have a Facebook ad and the call to action button includes these UTM parameters within the link that is attached to the button, when people click, they're automatically going to trigger that link in their web browser and that's what's going to take them to the store. The thing is that this link, if it has UTM parameters, it's not a simple destination link. It has parameters that carry information about where the customer came from. So this is how it goes. They click the ad, but then there are parameters in your link. Let's say your link is x, y, and z .com, And then there's dash, source, and then medium. These are just simplified versions of the link. I'll show you the actual links and how they work in a second. And etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Right. So the link has a portion here of information that doesn't really change the destination, but carries information from when the customer came. And of course, these parameters are going to be different depending on which link you use. So let's say you have a picture ad and you want to differentiate people that come from your picture ad from people that come from your video ad, right? So the UTM parameters associated with the picture ad are going to say something that identifies those customers that are coming from the picture. Same with the video. The video ad UTM parameters, the link that you're using for the video, which is going to be different from the one you use for the picture, is going to have parameters that identify those customers as coming from the picture. So even though both links will target people or point people to the exact same place, they will carry different little bits of information that will allow you to know if they came from the picture or from the video. So they're clicking the URL and the data that is in the URL is of course going to take them to your Shopify store. This cannot be blocked. Safari can be here blocking any communication between code from your Shopify store and your ad, but because this information is not being passed through any third party communication channel, it's actually being passed directly through the URL itself. There's no way that they're going to block this, these privacy restrictions, right? So you're going to be able to know if this person came from Facebook source, came from campaign A, B, or C, and they used ad number one, two, or three. So you know exactly where they came from. Okay, cool. Now that we understand how these different ways of tracking information work, I'm going to explain very easily how you can start implementing UTM parameters into your campaigns right now. And I'm going to break it down between Facebook and the Google UTM parameter builder app, which is the one that you can use to track data on other platforms. Facebook makes it very easy. Google has its own platform that you can then translate into other marketing platforms. So I'm going to show you those two right now. Okay, so we're in a Facebook ad campaign here. This is our creative and it's on the creative level that you enter your UTM parameters. So if we scroll down here, we're going to have a look at the place where it says build URL parameter. You see right here where it says build URL parameter. So we're going to click build URL parameter. And now this is what we want to fill in to make our UTM parameter functional. So campaign source here. Okay. So the way I like to do this is starting by the broadest part of the funnel and then into the more specific type of the advertising campaign. So we're going to start by saying that this campaign source came from Facebook. And this, we're going to write it down because of course, this is going to be the same for all of the ads. Now campaign medium, we want to use a parameter that is already set here. So we want to say campaign name, there's going to change and adapt to the campaign where this particular parameter is going to be used. So what this means is that you have five different campaigns with five different names. You can just copy the same link through all of those five. And this bracket here, campaign name is going to be replaced dynamically by Facebook with the name of the campaign that people are clicking. So you don't have to worry about typing out different UTM parameters for different campaigns and different ads. You just enter this dynamic parameter and then Facebook will automatically replace the brackets of campaign name with the actual campaign that is 
the link is being used on. So here we're gonna set it as campaign name. Then on campaign name, notice that I'm, I put campaign name here because I like the campaign name to come before, but you don't have to do that. You can do it whichever way makes it easier for you to read your data. Then afterwards, I like to do ad set name. So inside of the campaign, you know, you have multiple ad sets. We're gonna pass on the information of the campaign name first, and then the ad set name. And lastly, of course, we're gonna do the ad name. So this is the information that you're gonna be able to read from your Google Analytics screen for every person that clicks this UTM link. It's gonna say Facebook, it's gonna say campaign one, two, or three. It's gonna say ad set, you know, interest, Netflix, whatever it might be, whatever you use to name your ad sets. That's why naming ad sets is very important. And then the ad name, which could be picture one, video one, whatever it might be. And you're gonna be able to know exactly from which campaign, from which ad set, and from which ad your click came from. Then all you gotta do is click apply, and then Facebook generates the UTM check, the UTM link for you automatically, which is right here, then all you need to do is copy paste this into every single one of your creatives. So if you have this in every single one of your creatives, Facebook will dynamically replace the names between brackets with the correct parameters. So campaign name, ad set name, ad name for all of your Facebook campaigns, all your Facebook ads. Okay, now what if you're not running Facebook ads? That's what this comes in. This tool right here, if you Google for Google campaign URL builder, is going to help you make a YouTube UTM parameter for whatever it is that you need, right? So let's say you're doing a TikTok campaign. We're gonna make an example right here for a TikTok campaign. The website URL, of course, is the website that you're sending people to. Let's say we gotta put the HTTP, don't forget this, very important. We're gonna do ecommercementoring.com. Then this campaign ID, you can add it or not, it's up to you, you don't have to. Campaign source, let's say this is TikTok campaign campaign medium let's say this is tiktok video one and then campaign name let's say this is tiktok prospecting cbo one and you can have other topics like for example if you want to add the particular ad set let's say this is broad ad set number one on tiktok and you have all the information that you need to know where this click came from. So you're, if someone clicks this link, you're gonna see it in Google Analytics as TikTok, TikTok video one, prospecting CBO number one, broad ad set number one. So you know exactly where the traffic came from. All you have to do then is copy this link right here and paste it into the section in TikTok where it says tracking and UTM tracking parameters. So all pretty much all of mar marketing platforms these days have a section inside of your, either the ad set or the ad settings where you can set up your UTM parameters and your UTM tracking links. So that's where you paste this link right here and then you're gonna be able to see in Google Analytics the data for where this exact click came from. You're gonna be able to track your sales a lot easier. If you're using Shopify, even better because Shopify will track UTM parameters as well. So when you get sales in Shopify, there is a little, there, there is an option in the right corner of the screen inside of the order page where you can see where the exact order came from. If you click that, you're gonna see the traffic source and then you're gonna see your UTM parameters. So if you're using UTM parameters, you'll know exactly where the sale came from. Now, in terms of Google Analytics, what you wanna do is you wanna make your Google Analytics account, of course, none of this works if you don't have Google Analytics set up on your Shopify store. You wanna create your Google Analytics account and then you wanna click reports right here. You wanna click traffic acquisition and then you wanna click traffic acquisition by source and medium. I'm gonna put a picture on the screen right now of exactly how it looks when there's when, when it's already populating with traffic. This is just a dummy account right here, so it has no traffic. I can't exactly show you the menu, but I'll post a picture right here from one of the stores that we do have active so you can see exactly where it is and how it's gonna look for you. Now, this is going to allow you to track the exact sources of traffic from all across your different marketing campaigns. And this is completely free. So if you're a beginner and if you don't have the money to invest into expensive tracking and analytical tools, this is the best way for you to go. Now, keep in mind, this does require manual labor for you to know your return on ad spend because Google doesn't know what is the purchase value for each of the purchases that you got. All that Google can do is tell you where the traffic came from, where the sale came from. It cannot track the amount of the purchase. That will be on Shopify. So what you can do is you have low volume, it's very easy to do. You put up an Excel sheet where you put in a column for your purchase value, you put in a column for your ad spend, which you take from Facebook or whatever platform you're using, and then you know where the sale came from, you know how much you spent on each particular campaign, and you know how much it made back, and then you can easily set up another Excel column to calculate your return on ad spend. 
If you don't know how to calculate your return on ad spend, simply Google return on ad spend. It will be very easy to find a way to calculate that number. Now, if you're doing more volume, it becomes more complicated to track these things with Excel sheets because you'll end up spending a ton of time just importing numbers from one platform to the other. So the best solution that I would recommend would be to get something like Elevar here or Northbeam or even Triple Whale if you're using Shopify. Triple Whale I don't think works outside of Shopify, at least for now. But if you're using Elevar or Northbeam, these tools can organize your data, cross-reference data from your different marketing channels and show you all the numbers in a very, very convenient way. So that would be a solution more on the higher end if you have more budget to be able to invest in tracking and having to have more money to invest into your analytics. If you don't have the budget to invest into your analytics, then what I'd recommend is that you set up UTM tracking just as I've explained and then use an Excel sheet and manually input the values and have the calculation of your ROAS there on the Excel sheet for you to read for completely free. You don't need to buy any apps for that. And then if you get more volume, then you can invest in a paid tool. That's it for today's video, guys. I hope this was helpful. I hope this was useful for you to understand how you can get 100% tracking accuracy on your Facebook ads, TikTok ads, whatever marketing platform you're using without having to use or pay for very expensive apps.